everybody. How are you doing? Welcome to church. My name is Nick. I'm a minister here at Red Deer Lake United Church. We're an affirming church that gratefully gathers on Treaty 7 land. And the thing that we are all about is finding in the way of Jesus a new way of being human and alive in this world. A way connected to God, each other, and ourselves. This way that leads us into a life of justice, of belonging, beauty, and wonder. And we do that in all kinds of ways. But this morning, today, this afternoon, whenever you're watching this, it doesn't matter. Uh, we're here to do that one thing that we need to do to be truly and fully alive. And that's press pause, be still, and take some time to connect with God. That source of our life, that ground of our being, that spirit of peace, that mystery underneath it all, and find their life as it was meant to be. And so as we gather to do that, know that whoever you are, wherever you come from, whatever's going on in your life, whatever you're bringing in with you, uh, you're welcome here. That you belong here, and that this is the place that you need to be. So thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate you tuning in. Say hello, check in in the comments, um, and let's lean into this together. Let's do this knowing that God is with us and that God is a God of extravagant and indiscriminate love. And so why don't we start with a prayer. If you'd pray with me, please, let's bow our heads. And so God of life, uh, we start with a breath. This is deep deep breath. And so God, as we breathe in, let us know that we're breathing in your spirit. That spirit of peace, of life, of grace, that spirit that makes all things new. So knowing that you are in us, knowing that you are around us, help us be here, help us to show up, help us to open up. And may we find in this time the things that we are looking for. So God, knowing that you meet us where we're at, we turn ourselves in this time over to you. And we say this in the beautiful and liberating name of Christ by saying together, Amen. So one of the things that we do every week here at Red Deer Lake is this thing that we call grace and renewal. It's this time that we set aside where we can lean into God's grace, that perpetual second chance, that deep breath, that helping hand to pick us up, that, that spaciousness that God gives us. And we can find there the things that we need to keep on going. And today we're going to do that by doing a really ancient spiritual practice. Uh, some people call it contemplative art, some people call it icons, you can call it whatever you want. But what we're going to do is we're going to look at an, Im an image, 
a piece of art by the great Scott Erickson. Um, and we're going to let it speak to us. In our faith, we believe that God speaks to us in all kinds of ways, um, including art. And so we're going to put an image up in a second. And your job is to just look at it. Almost look through it. And in that practice of looking at it, looking through it, letting it speak to you. And almost having a conversation with it, paying attention to what gets evoked within you, what goes off in your heart, your mind, your body, your soul. And pay attention to that. Often it's the very first thing that comes up. And sometimes, if you're like me, that first thing that comes up is going to be scary. You're not going to want to listen to it. You're going to want to be like, nope, not that. But I invite you to be brave and vulnerable um, and hold on to that. Listen to that. Converse with that. Because often that's the one thing that God wants us to pay attention to. That's where the conversation is going to happen. So look at this art, stare at it, be taken by it, be abducted by it, and listen to what it says to you. So we've reached that part in the service where we share our prayers. And that's something that we always do here in this community because it's in sharing our prayers. It's in naming the stuff that's within us, all our laments, all our joys, our sorrows, our celebrations, our gratitudes. It's there that we not only give our prayers up to God, but it's also where we can tell each other, our friends, our loved ones, our community, what's going on in our lives. And we can turn to one another and we can say, hey, you're not alone. I'm in this with you. How can I support you? I know how that feels. Because sometimes it's just knowing we're not alone. It's knowing that other people can get it. Uh, sometimes that's all we need to keep on moving and keep on growing. And so I'd love to you, for you to share your prayers. Uh, what's going on inside of you? If you're joining us online, uh, share in the comments below uh, what's going on. What gratitudes do you have? What are you thankful for? What amazing things took place this week? Maybe they're small, maybe they're big. What brought you life? But also, what's breaking you apart? What are your laments? What are your sorrows? What's keeping you up at night? I'd love for you to share those two. Put them in the comments. Let us know so we can pray for you, so we can journey with you. And so we'll be taking all those things together. And we offer them up to God, knowing that God is with us, God is for us, and God is listening to our prayers. And so would you join me, please? Let's pray. So big and beautiful God, God who walks with us, God who is for us, God who holds us together, we come to you now with all our prayers, with everything that's going on inside of us. 
We live in a crazy world. There's so much chaos, there's so much confusion, there's so much uncertainty. And we're trying to live in the middle of that. And so God, we take some time now to offer up to you everything that's going on. Our joys and our worries. And ask that you hear them. Ask that your spirit move. And may we find in that some peace and some comfort And some hope. So God, we start with our gratitudes. We start by naming some things that we're thankful for. Things that bring us life. Things that make us excited. These things that have brought joy into our lives. So God, we know it doesn't matter what they are. But we name them now. Naming just three things that we're thankful for. And we say, thank you Thank you, thank you for them. And so, Spirit, we know that those aren't the only things going on in our lives and world. We've got things that are also tearing us apart. These things that are weighing us down that keep us up at night, that make us not want to get out of bed. These things that bring resentment and anxiety and fear. So we take some time right now to get courageous, to get bold, to get vulnerable, and name those now. Give us the strength to name our laments. And through it all, saying, help us, help us, help us. So, Spirit, may you hear our prayers. May you answer our cries. And may your spirit move. May she she go into places of chaos and bring peace and order. May she go into places of despair, bringing hope. Places of death, life. Places of fear, love. Help us to trust that she is moving. But God, we also know that that's not where we have to leave it. That we can't just offer thoughts and prayers, but you call us to be the answer to our thoughts and prayers. That you call us to embody them, to listen to the world around us and go out and be your spirit. To be the hands and feet of Christ to go into the despair, the fear, the chaos, and be a source of love and life in the world. So knowing that's what you call us to do, knowing that's what it means to be human, may you give us the courage, may you give us the awareness, the permission, the imagination, the audacity to go out and be your hands and feet. And knowing this is where the life that Christ calls us to go into leads, we remember the prayer that he taught us to pray, saying, Our Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen god be with you how are you doing you're still here everything is still okay We're about to head into our sermon time, so if you need a break, if you want to go fill up your coffee, hit pause, go do that now, because you're going to need it, because you are in for a treat. We've got a special guest with us today, 
You've heard from her before. She's a familiar face to us here at Red Deer Lake. It is the amazing Rachel Held Evans. Just over a year ago, Rachel passed away. Um, it was a big loss to the world of church because she was such a powerful, important, and formative voice for so many people. And she's got something important to us to say about what it means to follow Jesus, what it means to be the church, and live a life of love and justice. So we've got a video of her for you today. It's amazing. Um, and I'd love to hear from you what you think of it. And so buckle in. It's going to be amazing. I present to you our friend, Rachel Held Evans. <laughs> talking with atheists about why I'm still a Christian in spite of the fact that I've got a lot of intellectual questions and struggles with Christianity. Um, what I usually tell them is just, um, you know, I realize that I could be wrong. I really do. I realize that I might have this entire thing wrong, <laughs> but the story of Jesus is just the story I'm willing to risk being wrong about. I, I just, I see in Jesus something true and something real, and I have experienced that not just in the Bible. The notion that Jesus is somehow restricted to the Bible or God's presence is restricted to the Bible is a false one. I have experienced and known Christ in communion. I have experienced and known Christ when I'm hanging out with the least of these. I've experienced and known Christ in suffering. Um, so all of these experiences with Jesus have convinced me that this is just a person and a story that I'm willing to risk being wrong about. So maybe I've got it wrong. Maybe none of this is real, but I can't stop following Jesus. I can't stop being compelled by the truth that he teaches and the simple truth of loving God and loving your neighbors. What's the, uh, the gospel? Like, is that like a brand? Like <laughs> um, I mean, the gospel is the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord and Caesar is not. It's that um, Jesus is God's dream for the world, God's dream for all of us. Jesus is how God feels towards us. I mean, the good news is that when God became flesh, God suffered too, just like the rest of us. And that when God became flesh, God hung on a cross and looked out at the people who put him there and said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I mean, the good news is that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. The good news is that we fellowship with Christ in suffering. The good news is that we meet God in the least of these. Uh, the good news is, is that there's hope. Um, and the good news is that God looks like Jesus. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. I find that to be incredibly good news, especially when I'm fretting and worrying that maybe God hates all the same people I hate. Maybe God hates me. Maybe God hates the marginalized. Maybe God's against me. Maybe God's against this world. And then I look at Jesus and I see God dying before holding our sins against us. I see God choosing to hang on the cross and choosing to forgive rather than hold our sins against us. Nadia Bowles Weber says that Jesus was, says, I would rather die than be in the sin accounting business anymore. That's really powerful. Um, so that's the good news. It, and it's good news for everyone. And if it's not good news for the poor, if it's not good news for the marginalized, if it's not good news for the sick, the suffering, it's not good news for me. It's not good news. Um, so yeah, and I, I believe it. <laughs> uh, sometimes with a limp and sometimes um, it's a struggle, but I believe it. Did Jesus do something on the cross that we couldn't do for ourselves? Yeah, I mean, I think Jesus, I think Jesus was obedient to the point of death. Jesus uh, did not consider equality with God, the glory of God, the power, something to be grasped, but humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death on a cross. Yeah, I don't know that any of us are capable of that. I don't know if any of us um, on our own, apart from the work of Christ, is capable of humbling ourselves to that point, to that level of dying for our enemies, of not fighting back. Uh, Jesus was faithful to his own teachings to the point of death, loving his enemies to the point of death. 
I, I know that on my own, I'm not capable of that. I know on my own, I wouldn't love my enemies. I know I certainly wouldn't die for my enemies. Um, but Christ was willing to do that. And uh, on my behalf, I think that can mean as an example to me. And I believe, oh, I'm, sometimes I'm scared to say this stuff because I sure don't want to be tested on it. Uh, if I cultivate following Jesus and his teachings, if I pay attention to the Sermon on the Mount, Lord willing, I'd be willing to do the same. But I, don't, I sure hope I'm not asked to. You know. I'm not particularly confident in myself, but I'm confident in Christ. He did it. Uh, so, yeah. Was Jesus born to die? No. Well, a lot of times people say that Jesus was born to die, but I think Jesus was also born to live. Um, to a lot of times people talk about Jesus as, if, as though like God's mad at mankind, so God sends Jesus to sort of save us from ourselves. And so the whole point was for Jesus to come and to die and to save us from our sins so we could go to heaven. Uh, and a lot of times this leaves the whole story and, and Jesus' teachings completely out of the Christian faith, as though they're kind of inconsequential, like backstory to the cross. But I think Jesus' teachings matter, because when, when Jesus is teaching, when he's responding to the needy, to the outcast, to the marginalized, to the sick, all of that is showing us what God looks like when God is among us, when God is wrapped in flesh and wearing sandals. So if we want to be like God, we, we need to imitate and follow the teachings of Jesus. Um, so this notion that Jesus sort of just came to jump on the cross and to, to, uh, to rise from the dead, uh, I think leaves a lot of really important stuff out. Particularly the Sermon on the Mount, which is as challenging for me as it is for anyone else. The other day, I was in a debate with somebody and I was like, ha, oh, I know what verse will put them in their place. One from the Sermon on the Mount, you know, and I'm like, thumbing through, finding it, ready to prove That's them wrong. <laughs> exactly, I was pulling out my sword and then I started reading the Sermon on the Mount and I was like, oh, <laughs> That's right. I haven't got this either. So the teachings of Jesus are, I can't imagine anyone mastering those teachings. Uh, they're sort of new every morning. They're challenging every morning. They're powerful every morning. Um, so yeah, Jesus didn't just come to die. He came to live, to show us what God's like, to show us how, what it means to be like God. Uh, be perfect as my heavenly father, as the heavenly father is perfect. And that means forgiving enemies, turning the other cheek. I don't even want to get into it because it's so hard. <laughs> and, I, and I struggle with it too. But um, yeah. Why does God want to save us? Or why does God need to save, need to save us? Well, I think a lot of times people think about saving us from sins as being God saving us from eternal damnation and sort of limiting it to that. But I need liberation from my sin today. Uh, I think Jesus came to save me from my sins today, to save me from my pride, my obsession with being right and putting people in their place, um, my self-importance, my selfishness and my relationship with my husband and my relationship with my family and my friends. Um, I think Jesus saves us from our sin in the sense that Jesus shows us the way out of the grave. Uh, Jesus shows us death and resurrection. Jesus shows us loving our enemies to the point of death. Jesus liberates us from our sins, not just from an eternal perspective, but like a now perspective. i
everything for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Our hope and prayer is that something good happened, that you were comforted, you were challenged, you were inspired, that God did something within you. So as you head out into whatever is next, may you know that you are loved, may you know that you are enough, and may you go in peace, may you go in love, may you go and do it loudly, and may grace and peace be with you. Mm -hmm.